a distinct lack of sunshine. It hasn't been for the last week or so, it's really grey and dull. But uh, we're promised a bit of sunshine in the next few days, so we're going to get some miles between us and Manchester done. This here is affectionately known as the Great Wall of Todd. It holds up the uh, railway sidings up above. Apparently over four million bricks used in its construction back in the Victorian days. It's amazing. How's it going, friend? These stones, so slippy, aren't they? You can't be doing this in a rush. There's no way to the brush over this. No. Two hours. We've gone half a mile. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have done seven locks. We have done seven locks. And they're very slow, slow process. Boat time. Relax. You're all right, treacle. The other week I was uh, opening a gate on a lock and I slipped, my footing slipped, and the windlass I had went flying up in the air, <laughs> landed in the lock. Uh, it was too deep for us to fish it out with the magnet. So we've been and bought a new windlass. This one's got a plastic handle, so it's uh, easy to easier on the uh, palms of your hands. But uh, 27 quid. 
So um, keeping firm grip of this one. If anything's going in the lock, it'll be me, not the wind last next time. You're being looked after then? Yeah, fucking the biscuits. Nothing less than I deserve. We put this picture up months ago using that double-sided Velcro, which is supposed to hold up to two kilograms in weight. Well, believe me folks it doesn't because it came crashing down one evening didn't it as we were sitting there watching it did, yeah. something or other and uh, so I've bought these brackets and I've put it up properly so we've had to get a new frame a new piece of glass for the frame and uh, a new picture because it got damaged uh, and also bought some odds and sods back from the house haven't we to hang it up <laughs> haven't so, we just I'm not sure whether there were books in Cicero's time, which is, wasn't it? Wasn't he a Roman something or other? He was a writer, wasn't he? Roman, he was a, writer, yeah. a Roman writer, philosopher, I believe. But um, it says here, hand printed on a 1863 Albion press, and that's an old letterpress press for those what know, by Trevor Lloyd MBE. So we're going to have to find out who Trevor Lloyd is, aren't we? But it's printed on a journal of the House of Commons dated 1697 and down here there's a paragraph there mentioning something to the effect that uh, tanners in Southampton can well afford to pay additional taxes to fund the army the uh, war with France and a few other know. things that we've got to find home for we've bought a little um, linen chest back which at the moment is filled with bed linen <laughs> I think that's going to be for board games to go in. Yeah. The other new little cupboard that we bought is looking very smart. Whoops, lots of shadows. It's looking very smart. We're very happy with that. A little golden Buddha that's a bit special to Rich, bought by his daughter. And I think uh, there's another bag of books somewhere. Oh, the amount of books we got in here is just ridiculous. I've Got to pluck up the courage and build a bookshelf in the bedroom. Just walk through here, show you what. Because we've got these books at the foot of the bed there, which uh, has been kicked off the wall once or twice in the past. But we've got to remove this old car stereo. It doesn't work, we've never switched it on get rid of this corner cabinet here and uh, build a bookshelf floor to ceiling I think don't you Fran and just even if it's just narrow up to yeah. maybe there so we've got a walkway yeah. we could get 30 or 40 books down there yeah, at I think. least which will be so... beneficial to the ballast of the boat because everything's weighted on that side isn't it it's and a good uh, excuse to buy more books isn't it we've got to sort our ballast sort out, ballast <laughs> out yeah. so, so that... that's today's job no, I'm not, today's job is not building this. No, no. I've got to work up to that, friend. Mm -hmm. These short winter days don't give us much power through the solar pa panels on the roof. Uh, so we have to be really conscious about the power consumption. So we don't have gadgets on board for squeezing oranges or grinding coffee, <laughs> do we, friend? Well, this was our latest buy. I think it was about £1.50 or something. And uh, we do like, we always used to have freshly squeezed orange juice, but I had an electric gadget at the cottage. Um, so, yeah, this is our newfound manual orange juicer, which is nothing secret. Everybody knows about them, but this is what we're doing now. Every morning we're having beautiful fresh orange juice. Just a little bit of manual work. And in fact, it's quite... Um, I can't say therapeutic, but there's something quite nice about even making your orange juice rather than just sticking everything in machines. Yeah. Um, and I know you've seen before that we've got our manual coffee grinder, which we got from an antique shop, but you can pick them up on eBay. So the coffee beans just go in the top here. And um, for us, it, depending if it's extra cups or normal, it's 50. Or 70. 70 turns, turns for a full pot of coffee from the in the cafeteria. You just have to pretend you're opening a lock, really. But <laughs> it's uh, me in practice. And uh, the ground coffee comes out in the drawer. Boy, it smells good, doesn't it? And that's 
Fantastic. So, and it's all these little things which mean all we need is our one electric socket which runs through from the inverter, but the inverter is hardly ever on because it's really only for charging the yeah, laptop. Yeah, and in they, fact, sorry, in it, fact, you've just bought a 12, or we've managed to get hold of a 12 volt adapter which charges the laptop now. So this hardly ever goes on. I think it's our radio now is the only thing that needs charging, isn't it? Yeah, and the only other device that's used on, on there is your uh, hair dryer when you use it. Once in a blue moon if I'm being taken out for posh dinner or yeah. getting married. And the hair, something like that. hair straighteners that I use. <laughs> so, and we were recently going to buy ourselves a vacuum cleaner. We've brought back a rug from the cottage, which is, Jess loves it, look. <laughs> which has been brilliant and is really cosy, but we used to sweep the floor probably a couple of times a day before to keep it clean. Obviously, those of you that have dogs know that dogs on a boat could be a little bit of a problem. And just the grit coming in from towpath. So we've been looking at for um, a rechargeable vacuum cleaner. We had one before and it lasted six months and bits started falling off of it and it wasn't cheap. And it looks like you've got to pay about three or four hundred pounds to get a good one. So we've got another manual gadget, which I will go and get. Perfect Sunday breakfast. Egg on toast using Fran's need free recipe, which I'll put a link in the description below and also coming up now. So, this is our post breakfast brain exercise. And who knew you'd have a clue? The answer get one's knickers in a twist. <laughs> and who got that? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, we know. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> and this takes me back to my childhood and it was my job after dinner every day to run over with the good old carpet sweeper. We found one in a market hardware shop recently. It's fabulous. For £18 rather than £200 plus and having to charge up a vacuum cleaner. Which only lasts for 20 minutes. Once you've charged it up, yeah. we've got this. And so I, can give, I can have you doing that all day. I don't have to charge you up, do I? It's a good job. The rugs. You do have to charge me up <laughs> with cakes and chocolate Ale. and wine. <laughs> well, it's not a carpet sweeper, is it, friend? What do you call it? Oh, it's a sugary can. Sugary can. Because it goes. Sugary can. Doesn't make the same noise nowadays as they used to, but yeah, it's the sugary can. Well, as you can see, it's a fabulous day. It's the first sunshine we've seen in God knows how long. Just seems like forever. So we're on the move again. We've got a couple of miles and about six locks, seven locks to do. Um, we're gonna stay put, but we've run really low on energy. Because we've had no sun, the solar panels haven't been providing any power for us. The batteries are really low. Uh, when we turn on the taps, the lights dim, so uh, yeah, on the move, and it's a gorgeous day to be moving. Tomorrow's going to be damp and foggy, so make the most of it today. But well, just look at this.
Well, what do you think about today, Fran? It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. So cold. Ropes were frozen solid. We're all layered up. Leggings underneath the trousers, ready for the cold. And I am roasting. <laughs> So we found that the person on the boat gets cold, the one doing the locks doesn't. So we're going to do about two or three locks each to keep ourselves warm. At the moment I've done two, I'm absolutely baking. So I'm coming back on the boat, Rich. Wow. And the lock I've just done had um, a manual opening mechanism or a, a, a geared opening mechanism as well. So I think I did about 120 turns windless. Have I really got to come off and do the locks because I know why you want to come back on board. What's in there? This is our winter's coffee and biscuits and hand warmers. <laughs> Yesterday it was peeing down all day. We actually went out for a walk with the dogs to the top of that ridge there and walked round and back down to the village where we stayed. It was soggy, but it was beautiful once we were up there. Absolutely stunning. So on a day like this, when it's really cold and the locks are all quite close together, we don't have time to go back in. This is our emergency pack. So we've got a little pot of coffee, a pot of Marmite drink, hot water, biscuits or cake essential and my hand warmer waiting to be clicked if I need it. So we're all set up, had a cup of coffee, next lock's ready, on we go. Cheers Rich. scenery here is pretty impressive and uh, a little bit unique as to what we've seen before. It closed in on both sides of the canal by quite high hills but it's beautiful. This really strange gnarly knobbly landscape. It's something we've never been through before but it's wonderful. bridge after the lock. Always a bit of excitement when you can stop the traffic. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much traffic to stop so Fran's gone ahead to have a look at the system. No, oh, no, she's coming back. So it's the white rose of Yorkshire and the red rose of Lancashire on the plaque. Lancashire, Yorkshire. <laughs> what are you going to need to do this? Nothing, it's manual. I'll film you doing it if you like. Oh, have a go.
luck's done. Barely see a thing. There's yeah. been a little bit of crashing and banging going on, isn't there? Because yeah. you can't see your way into the lock. Bloody sun. <laughs> and uh, this is the highest now uh, we're going to get on this canal. So 600 feet above sea level. And uh, we're going to be mooring up soon. This is the summit. And there's a pub ahead, Francis. Oh, that's Friday. It's Friday. You know what that means, don't you? Yes. So. Potatoes. You've lost a train of thought there, haven't you, thinking about the pub? Oh, yeah, potatoes are in the uh, fire, so we love a cup of soup and um, a hot potato, don't will we? Will we ever get bored with jacket potatoes? Could yeah, we will when spring arrives and we can start eating salad again. Not that we can't anyway. Not for now. So, a really pleasurable couple of hours this morning it's or so. Been so it's been a lovely. Lovely, lovely cruise. And um, um, the gloves. Fantastic. I've not had rainers, I've not had cold fingers. You're all hot stuff anyway, so you don't need them. Um, it's been a lovely cruise. And the, the scene I said earlier on, the scenery here is just really unbelievable, isn't it? It's uh, really, well, I was going to say odd, but it's not odd. It's just so different to anywhere we've been, isn't it? I think when you're down on the canal, this is, this is Lancashire now, isn't it? So yeah. if you're walking, you tend to be up in the hills and seeing it from a different viewpoint. But it is almost a bit like a lunar landscape when you're down here, isn't it? Lunar? Yeah, it is, because it's all these undulating hills and you can't work out sometimes where all these slow slopes have come from and you just get a big lump of rock in the middle of nowhere. It's incredible. Yes. We're only spoilt by the uh, road running by the side of us, but it's very quiet, isn't it? You can't hear it, really. So, yeah. So we're going to move tomorrow, probably it's going to be a cold, foggy day by all accounts tomorrow, but we need to move, we've got water to uh, get to fill up the tank because the water points up here don't exist even though they're in the map apparently. The last two water points weren't yeah. there, so we're so getting we're a little bit low. Very low on water, <laughs> so uh, yeah that's tomorrow, 10 locks and uh, that will be at a place called Littleborough, is it? Littleborough? I think Littleborough, yeah, yeah. This is the, I mean, this is the summit, but the next finish is also called Summit. Really? Yes, it is called Summit. The whole no, village. the pub's called Summit. No, the village and the town is called... The last time you disputed me on the video, you had to put a caption on to say <laughs> that I was right. Let's see if that happens well, I should never again. learn, will I? <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, Please subscribe below. Oh, I forgot what I've got to say. <laughs> Go on, Fran, we've rehearsed these. Wait, wasn't it hit the subscribe button? Because you've just did, hit the, no, not the like button. You've just done the subscribe button. And hit the notification oh. button <laughs> that will notify you every time we upload a video. And if you really like us, follow us on Twitter. And Facebook, I remembered that bit. And Instagram. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.